The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Thursday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And we got a mixed market so far, similar action to yesterday in terms of the Dow with the leader. Dow up 150 points right now, about six tenths percent in the green, trading 25,683. S&Ps positive by three points, that's about one tenth percent, trading at 3,039. NASDAQ futures negative by 80 points, trading at 93.52. We got some negative action in oil. We got some strength in gold. Oil off 22 cents at 32.59. We have the gold contract right now up about $10, trading at 17.38. And with that, like doing the program at 8.30 a.m. because we're always getting a bunch of data, and especially this morning, weekly jobless claims, <clears throat> excuse me, 2.123 million. The estimate was looking for about 2 million. That number hitting the tape right at 8.30, a minute and a half ago, jumping into the markets to see if there's a reaction. You see a little bit of volatility on this 8:30 a.m. bar. We're looking at five-minute bars here. We spike to above 3,040, currently sitting at 3,035. All things considered, pretty much in line, missing it by about 800,000. Uh, no, excuse me, 80,000. 80,000. 2.12 versus 2.05. So 70, 73,000 to be exact, uh, missing that number. Jumping back into the charts of the indices overnight, we'll start things off with the Dow. You see the finish yesterday? Quite a charge higher yesterday, reversing for the Dow all of the early losses in the market. Remarkable turnaround in all the markets. You had the Dow go from 25,387. We actually dipped below 25,000 for a brief moment at about 11 a.m. And we trade higher through the day, make a high overnight at about 25,771. Back up at that level at 2 a.m., just off that price level. S&Ps yesterday, you had about a 2% move down and up from 3,035, basically, down to a low of 29.66 up back by the end of the day to about 3,040 almost, and you're sitting right at that level. We were higher by about 10 points at one point in the evening last night, backed off of that level a bit. NASDAQ 100, the laggard, NASDAQ 93.44. There's your crude oil market, $32.53. With the Memorial Day Monday holiday, we got crude inventories, EIA, 11 a.m. this morning, natural gas, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time this morning. There's gold trading higher, was above 17.40, Gold trading at 1738. Euro US dollar above 110 at 1104. In terms of what you have happening across the market, there seems to be the headline I was most interested in this morning in terms of China approving Hong Kong security legislation defying President Trump. So you have Chinese lawmakers approving a proposal for sweeping new national security legislation in Hong Kong, defying a threat by U.S. President Donald Trump to respond strongly to a measure that democracy advocates say will curb essential freedoms in the city. China locking that down. Um, remarkable thing I found here, who was the one? One person in China's rubber stamp legislature, good for them, I'm curious myself, the Nationals People's Congress, China's rubber stamp legislature, approved the draft decision by a vote of 2,878 to 1. Good luck to whoever that one is over in uh, China today. On Thursday, six abstentions as well. So that throwing uh, some tension into an already very tense situation um, between the U.S. and China. You had Secretary of State Pompeo come out yesterday and say their special status was no longer intact in terms of that they were under Chinese control. And it's hard to make an argument against that when you see articles like this. And um, no matter what, I believe the date is 2047 that China takes Full control, 27 years when you talk about taking control of a democracy is not a long time. And that's beginning to play out right now over there. Other headlines out there this morning. How about Carl Icahn exiting his Hertz trade at a loss of $1.6 billion? Quite a price tag. So this dates back. Uh, to 2014. He first took a position in the company in 2014. He agitated 
to oust the then CEO, Mark Versora. Hertz is on its fourth CEO since then. Uh, so he got out 55.3 million shares on Tuesday for 72 cents a share. His holdings represented about 39% of the company's stock. Hertz going BK, they were already struggling. Uh, and I'm just gonna back this up a lot to see I mean, just remarkable. Look at look at where this stock was. In here is 2014, folks. You floated in 2014 at the beginning of the year between 80 and 90, made it up to 97 dollars. You ended 2014 at about 80 dollars. He just exited this position at 72 cents. That is quite a price tag, um, for sure. And he's saying he believes that as they go through bankruptcy, they'll be around, but uh, he is not gonna be part of that as he is out. Her shares fell as much as 21% to $1.04 yesterday in the trading that he came out. The on paper loss icon registered from his Hertz stake doesn't take into account, though, the company's spin off of Herc Holdings in 2016. Icon's 15% stake, stake in the equipment leasing company is worth $134 million, still lost $1.6 billion. Uh, quite a price tag. What I didn't know in reading this is that Hertz was sold by Ford Motor Corporation to private equity funds in a 2005 leveraged buyout and taken public the next year. The company also levered up to buy, yeah, I remember this one, Dollar Thrifty Automotive Group in 2012 after a two-year bidding war with rival Avis. Not wise to be buying up your competition in a market that's about to get decimated by the likes of Uber. But Hertz shares quite a slide. Uh, he actually made it down to 40 cents at one point. That's a monthly. There's your daily, and you see it. We're trading right now at about 113 by 114. We'll jump over some of those ride-sharing companies, talk about a rebound. We're gonna open basically flat for Uber shares this morning at 34.65 with the market that's up a bit. Lyft shares, quite a rebound, but not quite as high as Uber. And uh, I talk about these companies a lot, long-term bull on Uber in a big way, probably on Lyft too, but you might have to endure a tough year, two years, three years even on Lyft because uh, Uber, I mean, they had come out before all of this and talked about that uh, they were going to be cash flow positive by the end of the year. And the market really accelerated to these highs above 40. You pull back to $13 and uh, their CEO comes out and says, listen, we, we have billions of dollars. We're going to be okay even if business drops off 80%, which it basically did. But Uber Eats accelerating during this. So the highs was just were just above 40. We're, at, we're back at 35. When you compare it to Lyft, um, and not even counting this high back here in terms of their initial IPO. But if you just start where you were prior to the collapse of COVID, you were at 52 and you're still sitting at 33, right? Uber's only five bucks away from 40 to 35, whereas on Lyft, I mean, you're a solid 20% plus away from where that equity is, uh, even far exceeding that actually up to like 50, 53. So you're talking about $17, you're like 50%. You would have to go up from where you're at right now uh, to get to those highs. So be wary of Lyft, not as much cash in a, a tough market and they don't have Uber Eats, which is a huge difference. You see, you hear the stories about Uber Eats um, buying DoorDash, is it? I believe consolidating that in industry. Okay, jobless claims, 2.1 million. The VIX though. Taking it in stride, marking it taking it in stride. The S&P is positive by five. The VIX at 2821. It's still earnings season. Dollar Tree, Dollar General. We'll go over those when we get right back. Stay tuned. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P's positive by three, Dow futures positive by 155, NASDAQ futures negative by 81. Lots of good action today, as I mentioned. You also got U.S. first quarter GDP at 830 as well, falling 5.0%. They were looking for a 4.8%. That's the second reading of the second quarter U.S. gross domestic product was Second reading of the first quarter, I believe that's supposed to say. The second reading of the first quarter, U.S. GDP was expected to remain unrevised at 4.8%. Uh, that number at 830, the market digesting it all in stride. Other headlines out there, I wanted to pull up this chart. Bloomberg had a cool article out there today just talking about a bunch of visuals in terms of how things have changed, whether it's talking about um, unemployment rate rising, whether it's Italy, the U.S. going from under three to over 10, Italy from 10 to 12. You see the shifts across the board. The U.S. is the most dramatic by far. One of the things that struck me the most was getting into the people affected. Uh, a majority of only the highest paid U.S. workers can do their jobs remotely. Quite a stark illustration graphically. When you look at share of income broken down into quartiles, top, next 25%, the first being the bottom, 62% of the top 25% earners can do their job remotely. It drops down to 37%. That would be between 50 and 75, 20% for like the 25 to 50th percent earners. And if you are in the bottom 25% of earners, there's less than a 10% chance you can work remotely. Not surprising, unfortunately. You know, many times when you're earning that, you are doing jobs um, that require whether it's service, manual labor, um, being there, and your hands doing the work at that level. So interesting statistic, wanted to bring that up. Jumping into the fray of social media, you had President Trump out there, furious at Twitter. He aims to order at tech, he aims an order at tech giants. So the story here is uh, to expect an executive order. I believe the tweet is, here it is. Um, let's see, now that's talking about voting. It's tough to keep track how much stuff is flying. Um, but nonetheless, you have President Trump talking about that an executive order uh, will be maybe expected today. How that plays out, the legality of that, what it is, he is the president, we will see. Uh, they are also private companies, we will see about that. And you got Zuckerberg. So Twitter was the one that fact-checked 
President Trump. He, Twitter's really in the crosshairs. Facebook trying to get ahead of it. Zuckerberg saying social media networks should not be fact-checking political speech. Zuckerberg catches a lot of flack for that deal, literally saying that politicians can almost literally lie and they can promote those ads on their network and it is up to voters to decide what is the truth, whether you agree with that or not. That is usually a heated topic, but check out the volatility on some of these stocks. You have Facebook shares down from 230 to 222. Twitter shares this morning down from 33 to 3150. Both of those getting hit on that news. <clears throat> okay, jumping over to earnings. You had two of the dollars out today. Dollar General, the discount retailer, reported quarterly profits of 256 a share. And actually, I have two articles up for both of these already. Dollar General. Getting into the numbers, 650 million net income, or 256 a share, up from 385. Check it out, right? Net income of 650, they made 385 a year earlier. Sales rose 27.6% to 8.4 billion from 6.6 billion. I'm slowing it down because these are magnificent numbers. The estimate was $1.75. And they came in at 256 to bring it back, okay? $1.75 on sales of 7.6, and they came in at 8.4. Quite a beat for Dollar General. Check out that action from 187 up to 193. You're at 189. You also had Dollar Tree out with their numbers, trading even higher from 87 to 95. Both the dollars, Dollar Tree numbers, getting into those. Net income, 247 million or $1.04 a share. Sales, 6.29 billion, up from 5.8. So they were looking for 87 cents on 6.14, and they ended up coming in at $1.04 on 6.29. Same store sales increased 7% with Family Dollar up 15.5% and Dollar Tree actually down. So Family Dollar really crushing it, up almost 16% same store sales, carrying Dollar Tree higher on that. Also on the earnings front, you get CRM after the bell today. Salesforce always been quite a force indeed. See how they play out in terms of how the COVID epidemic has hit them. You go from 195 to 115, back at about 176, going to open a bit higher. Their earnings after the bell. Also in the world of cannabis, you get Canopy, one of the biggest cannabis companies out there. They get their earnings tomorrow. Checking in, they're going to open a little bit higher today. Quite a volatile session even yesterday from 2050 down almost $2 to 1850. You finish the day right at around 20 bucks. Speaking of volatility, how about Disney? Disney coming out with their plans that they're going to be opening what is to be middle of July. So Disney kind of pushing things back a little bit. You're going to see some of the parks opening in June. Disney giving it some time. Want to make sure that they're doing it right. Uh, Disney has so much at stake that, that they probably, you know, if you're just in the parks business, you got to get back in the parks business. But Disney's not just in the parks business. They're in the movie business. They're in the Mickey Mouse business. They're in the Donald Duck business. They're in the Star Wars business. They're in the Marvel business. They're in the Disney Plus streaming business. Uh, they're in the Simpsons business. They're in the Fox business. All of that, they have to protect and make sure their brand's protected. And I imagine that's why, smartly so, I imagine. But things are going to be delayed. So since yesterday, 124.25, quite a sell-off. We're sitting at about 120.91 on Disney ahead of that. Jumping back to other companies with earnings so far this morning. Burlington Stores, the apparel retailer, lost $4.76 a share for the latest quarter, wider than the $1.55 the market was looking for. Revenue well below estimates. Burlington said it was not prepared to give guidance. Stores were closed on March 22nd due to the pandemic, remained closed through the end of the quarter. These are some of the toughest ones, right? You can't have same store sales when your stores are closed, let alone if you're already uh, in a tough spot competing in a retail sector that's Burlington. So you see their numbers from 210. I think it is B-U-R-L, correct? Yes, B-U-R-L. Their numbers out right now, they have a bid ask 205 by 208 to see the type of volatility they've had. You go from 250 to 105. Quite a rebound, though, for retail. Uh, discount retailer probably having to do with that, but back pretty unchanged on those numbers. So Amazon said it would offer permanent jobs to about 70% of the U.S. workers hired to cope with the increased demand. So they're going to keep about 7 out of 10. Not bad when I think you're talking about uh, a couple hundred thousand workers potentially. So they go over the news story with Twitter and Facebook. Donald Trump said to issue an executive order targeting social media companies. Uh, we'll see how that plays out, folks. American Airlines 
Airline is planned to cut management and support staff by about 30%. So Americans, some of the airlines today, though, as you do get a rotation out of some of the biggest accelerators during this, uh, you get some of the airline stocks getting quite a pop even uh, the last couple days. So far today, it looks like we're even on that. But let's check out some of the others. Delta. Because these stocks, along with the bank stocks, Delta down a bit too. Jumping around to some of the bank stocks, continuing higher. Look at JP Morgan. We were just under 90. We're going to open at 102.78. You're up a buck 50 just from yesterday. Bank of America shares from 25.98 to 26.26. So banks are going to open higher again. City. 52.88 from 52.66. We're up almost $10 from where we were trading at, which is more than 20% from Friday action in the city. Stay tuned, folks. We come back, finish up the program, see what else we have on tap for Thursday trading. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets pretty calm to where we kicked off the program. S&P is positive by 5, Dow up 184, NASDAQ negative by 99. Jump it back to some companies with earnings last night. You had Vox. They're out with their numbers. Talk about some volatility, but we're a little bit unchanged. Basically up a bit. You see the spike to 2120. Getting into the numbers. 
Box forecast annual revenue above analyst estimates and beat targets on quarterly sales on Wednesday. Demand rises for its online collaboration tools. I mean, check out this stock in the long run. You talk about winners and losers. You go from 17 down to eight. We're gonna open today at about $20 on that company. Also on the earnings front, Toll Brothers. They were out with their numbers. Luxury home builder, Toll Brothers scraps 2020 forecast. Should not be surprising there. Net income fell to 75.7 million or 59 cents a share. From 129 million or 87 cents, revenue fell 9.8 percent. Toll T O L is their symbol. We're going to open higher today, from 50 to 13. We're going to open at about 35. There's your action on Toll Brothers last night, up to 35.64. What else we have going on? Head on over to the front page of TFNN. I just had it up. There it is. Our man Basil Chapman. Review of Basil's favorite technical tools that have produced strong gains in 2020. Come on over to the front page, sign up for the opening call. Basil Chapman does a great program every day at noon, Tiger Technician's Hour, and he'll be in there with subscribers for 90 minutes tonight from 4 till 5.30. Lots of topics covered, how he's been trading the market. Check it out on the front page of TFNN, 90 minutes beginning at four o'clock tonight. And all of those new subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. Finishing it up with news number items in terms of earnings as we wrap it up, Workday. Workday fell four cents a share short of estimates, quarterly earnings 44 cents. We also had HPQ earnings, we'll jump to those two, Wday. There's Workday spiking higher up to almost 180 from 170 and HPQ with some action lower to 1580, now it's 16 from 1712. Stay tuned, folks. Should be an interesting day in the markets. Getting some serious volatility recently. Stay tuned. Larry Pesvento coming up live at 9 o'clock. Live programming all day at TFNN. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.